when extensive surgery is required on the upper jaw and teeth, or when the usual injections are contraindicated to flumen or infection, axillary block should be used. With one injection to each side, the entire upper jaw and teeth may be anesthetized. It is the purpose of this film to review the anatomy and to demonstrate the technique of injection. Let us review some of the important landmarks on this skull. The canine fossa is the wide depression that extends from the canine eminence to the zygomatic process of the maxilla. Immediately above it, near the infraorbital margin, is the infraorbital foramen. The zygomatic arch has been removed. Deep to it, we see the infratemporal fossa, which communicates through the pterygomaxillary fissure with the pterygopalatine fossa, and with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. On this particular skull, we remove a large section to better demonstrate the course of the maxillary nerve. After emerging from the cranial cavity through the foramen rotundum, it traverses the upper part of the pterygopalatine fossa and enters the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure at about its midpoint. In the floor of the orbit, it follows first the infraorbital groove, then the infraorbital canal, finally emerges at the infraorbital foramen where it divides into its terminal branches. The posterior superior alveolar nerve or nerves branches from the maxillary nerve and the pterygopalatine fossa. The middle superior alveolar when present is usually a branch of the infraorbital given off while the nerve is still in the groove but may branch off the maxillary nerve, in which case it enters the orbit with the infraorbital. The anterior superior alveolar nerve is given off from the infraorbital nerve in the infraorbital canal. We now take a closer view of the pterygopalatine fossa. Notice that inferiorly, it funnels into the greater palatine canal. To see the canal clearly, a wedge-shaped part of the posterior maxilla is removed. Observe that in this specimen, the greater palatine canal is just over one centimeter long. The canal is actually variable in length and direction, which must be taken into account if this route is chosen to introduce the anesthetic into the pterygopalatine fossa. When a straight needle is used, it's often impossible to direct it correctly. Because of the interference of the lower jaw, the needle is deflected into the infratemporal fossa. But with a needle on a curved hub, its point can be kept on its proper course toward the maxillary nerve. It is important to remember, however, that if directed too far laterally, the needle will enter the infratemporal fossa. If the needle is directed too far medially, it may penetrate the thin medial wall of the canal and enter the nasal cavity. If the needle is directed correctly, but advanced too far, it will enter the orbit. In view of these mechanical difficulties, we prefer the tuberosity approach introduced by Arthur Smith. The needle follows the posterolateral surface of the maxilla. By keeping close to the bone, we avoid injury to the maxillary artery and pterygoid plexus of veins. Our method for determining the depth of injection is based on an anatomical relationship that appears to be constant, irrespective of age. Note that the distance from the infraorbital margin to the gingival margin in the premolar region is the same as the distance between the floor of the posterior part of the orbit and gingival margin at the second molar. This is demonstrated with a Bowley gauge.
By noting this distance on the needle and establishing a reference point, it can be observed that when this point is level with the gingival margin at the second molar, the needle point reaches the level of the inferior orbital fissure and is in close proximity to the maxillary nerve. We now turn to a dissection which will demonstrate the soft structures with which we are particularly concerned. Reflected in turn are the skin, the superficial fascia, and the temporal fascia. To give better exposure, removed in part are the zygomatic arch, the masseter muscle, the temporalis, and the coronoid process of the mandible. We can now see the two heads of the lateral pterygoid muscle. This is the medial pterygoid muscle. Here is the lingual nerve and the inferior alveolar nerve. The maxillary artery is next shown. It is followed to the pterygopalatine fossa. Here is its posterior superior alveolar branch. The maxillary nerve is shown crossing the pterygopalatine fossa and entering the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure. The posterior superior alveolar nerve is a branch of the maxillary nerve. A close-up view shows the maxillary nerve as it enters the orbit to continue on as the infraorbital nerve and is accompanied by the infraorbital branch of the maxillary artery. We will replace the skin flaps and look at the same structures on the left side. Again, we reflect skin, superficial fascia, and remove the masseter muscle and the zygomatic arch. We remove the temporalis muscle, coronoid process, and a section of the ramus of the mandible down to the lingular nerve enters a small foramen on the posterior wall of the maxilla. A small branch supplies the gingiva and buccal mucosa in this same region. The zygomatic nerve is here shown. Through its zygomaticofacial and zygomaticotemporal branches, it supplies the skin of the malar and anterior temporal regions. The path of the needle is demonstrated by advancing a probe along the posterolateral surface of the maxilla. Blocking the maxillary nerve in the pterygopalatine fossa or at the inferior orbital fissure gives anesthesia to all its peripheral branches. These branches and the tissues that they innervate will be considered by area in various planes. First, the distribution of cutaneous innervation is illustrated here. Observe these structures at a deeper plane. As the maxillary nerve leaves the pterygopalatine fossa to become the infraorbital nerve, it gives off the posterior superior alveolar nerve. Then, as the infraorbital continues, it gives off the middle superior alveolar and anterior superior alveolar nerves. These three alveolar nerves innervate all the upper teeth and their buccal and labial investing structures to the midline. The terminal branches of the inferior orbital nerve innervate areas of the upper lip, the nose, and the lower eyelid. At a still deeper plane, observe the branches of the maxillary nerve that emerge via the pterygopalatine ganglion. The posterior superior lateral nasal and the posterior inferior lateral nasal innervate the conche and the nasal mucosa. The nasopalatine nerve follows along the septum through the incisive canal to innervate the soft tissues of the anterior palate. 
The greater palatine traverses the pterygopalatine canal to innervate all soft tissues of the hard palate, except in the anterior area supplied by the nasopalatine nerve. The lesser palatine nerve accompanies the greater palatine through the pterygopalatine canal and innervates the soft palate and parts of the tonsillar pillars. On this 13-year-old girl, who is to have all her remaining upper teeth removed, we demonstrate our preferred approach to the maxillary nerve. The needle follows along the posterolateral surface of the maxilla toward the inferior orbital fissure. Our apprehensive patient is first premedicated intravenously with pentobarbital until relaxed. This took only 50 milligrams. We then gave 25 milligrams of meperidine with three-tenths of a milligram of scopolamine. The insertion point for the needle is at the height of the vestibule opposite the last molar. Our method of determining the depth of injection, as previously explained, is the distance from the gingiva to the infraorbital margin. The sensitive periosteum is reached after a 15 millimeter penetration. Here a few drops of anesthetic solution is deposited and allowed time to take effect before advancing. We thus proceed by steps into tissue as it becomes anesthetized. Upon reaching the predetermined depth, the aspiration test is always made. Now the remaining contents of the 1.78 cc cartridge is injected. The patient now demonstrates that the anesthetic has begun to take effect. And in five minutes, the testing of the gingiva gives evidence of complete anesthesia in those areas supplied by both the alveolar and palatine nerves. During surgery, the patient is relaxed and at ease and fully cooperative. This man of 55 is to have all his upper left posterior teeth removed as the preliminary step to full upper denture construction. Here too, we use the preferred Arthur Smith approach. Measurement for the depth of injection is made. The needle is advanced by steps. And the aspiration test done before final injection. The alveolar and palatine nerves were entirely anesthetized by this one block. Note that this unpremedicated patient shows no signs of pain as the surgery is performed. This 15-year-old boy is to have all his upper teeth removed due to total destruction by caries. You will notice that he's extremely nervous and apprehensive. We obtained rather deep sedation by intravenous premedication with 90 milligrams of pentobarbital, followed by 30 milligrams of meperidine with 3 tenths of a milligram of scopolamine. The depth of insertion is again determined by measurement. In this case, we demonstrate bilateral injections using the pterygopalatine canal approach. 
The exact location of the posterior palatine foramen is here shown. The needle is advanced through the canal until the predetermined depth is reached. The needle is then in the pterygopalatine fossa at a level with the maxillary nerve. Here we deposit the anesthetic solution. The aspiration test was done on the right with an aspirating syringe and on the left with a self-aspirating cartridge. In conclusion, these demonstrations show the advantages of the maxillary nerve block. Minimal amount of anesthetic solution needed for results. One injection to a side in place of many for profound anesthesia of the entire upper jaw. The ideal injection when inflammation or infection precludes other injections and when extensive surgery is planned under circumstances where local anesthesia should be used.